because uh, Grandmaster Misha Pap, as you already know, and uh, this is a new series, a new course. And what is this all about? Uh, you saw the title already Fight for Initiative. Uh, so, <clears throat> what it means, uh, initiative? Well, uh, in chess, like in life, we know that it should be, it is something good, right? When you have initiative, you have advantage, you have, uh, you're uh, in charge, yes, we can say that. So, like in life, in chess, initiative is, you know, a very good thing and very important thing, yes? And we all know this. Uh, I don't need to <laughs> read to you, you know, definition of initiative. Uh, but uh, probably most of you, most of the chess players think that initiative is connected only with uh, attack. That could be um, true to some extent. Because, uh, you know, um, if you are attacking, it means uh, basically that you should be, have some advantage, yes, if you're attacking and your opponent is defending and so on. But I think uh, this uh, um, whole, uh, you know, thing about initiative is not so simple. I mean, you can say, okay, this guy is very dangerous. He plays very dynamic attacking chess like for example was Michal Tai, you know big legend of this game and many others uh, okay yes but attacking chess and initiative is not doesn't have to be the same thing they, they don't have to be synonyms uh, and in this series in this course I will present to you uh, uh, you know some uh, a selection of games which uh, I think uh, clearly show what it means in chess to fight for initiative. Sometimes, you know, uh, it could be that one side just takes over initiative and, you know, takes the charge, but sometimes it's not so easy. Sometimes you have, uh, especially nowadays in modern times, sometimes you have that both sides try to, uh, you know, outsmart their opponent and try to overtake the initiative. Uh, here I have a, a relatively simple example and uh, uh, why I show this. Uh, I will use a Morphe game for this purpose of this intro because he was, you know, one of the greatest players in history and even Fischer was claiming that he was the best player in history of chess um, because uh, you know, facts show that he was de facto uh, unofficial world champion in his time, yes? Because, because he managed to beat all of the best chess players in the world in that time. This is the, the end of, uh, well, it was middle and uh, toward, yeah, middle of the 19th century. <clears throat> and yes, toward the end of the, yes, only, only after his... Uh, uh, only after his retirement, uh, people could claim that uh, Anderson became the, the best uh, chess player in the world. But in those times, it was not, uh, you know, FIDE was still not established. We didn't have official um, title for the world champion, yes, and so on. Uh, why I am showing his game first? When we know that all those games, I mean, most of his games were very, you know, very aggressive style, very dynamic games, and uh, you can see just attack, attack, attack. Maybe so, okay. Uh, but you know, somehow I will, I will be showing you here throughout this uh, course. Uh, you know, you will see some amazing players, and I will show at least. Uh, I think it will be at least two games per uh, player i think so and of course i couldn't uh, i couldn't uh, make perfect selection yeah i tried to avoid um, two <laughs> two famous games you know i know and uh, for example 
when you think about Paul Morphy, we know all about opera game, yes? Morphy against consultants, it was played in opera and so on between two parts and so on. But, uh, you know, I will omit that game because everybody knows about it. You can find it very easily and so on. Uh, and I'll show you um, in this game, Shoot 10 Morphy. It's a very famous game and I like this game. Not only because it's swift and clear, you know, attacking game, and demolition job, if, if you want to say that. But it also shows... Um, some hints about how Morphy was playing chess and uh, to be honest with you it was much easier to do that in those times in 19th century so I mean even then then there was no feeder there was no uh, grandmaster title there was no rating system I mean just some uh, some you know uh, books and maybe some uh, chess magazines but not very just very few yeah uh, and compared to today, state of affairs in chess, it's a huge difference. So, of course, today is a totally different story. Uh, okay, Morphy, yes. And um, because, you know, he comes from another era, that's why I am not showing his games in this, in this, unfortunately, I have to say, in this course. Because I think I find them uh, like maybe when he had a very nice attacking game, it was yeah probably a little bit one-sided. That's why, unfortunately, I'm not showing also the games of great Mihal Tai, you know, big legend and one of the best attacking players in the history. Because here I try to show you that uh, initiative is not only that. Initiative is uh, more than just attack and more just attacking against opponent's king. Initiative can be also, uh, you know, you can overtake some strategical initiative, but that's, of course, uh, not very often. And you can also take initiative on the queen side, where, you know, probably both kings are on the king side, safely tucked in, and, but you, you overtake initiative on the, on the queen side. And uh, you have a number of uh, openings where we can see that, for example, in some Benonis. In Benoni, Black would usually seek some counterplay on the on the queen side, and for example, in Volga Gambit, Benko Gambit, and uh, maybe some of you might know that I'm also one of the bigger, uh, you know, uh, uh, protagonists of Benko Gambit, and I like that. And in Benko Gambit, usually you would like to, with black pieces, you would like to take initiative on the queen side. So. Or taking initiative doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to attack your opponent's king, crush through and mate him. Well, that could be the case, of course, uh, but not only that, yes. Of course, you might say that attack is not only attack on the, on the king. Uh, that could be the true, yes. But still, okay, let's, let's start with this, uh, with this intro game. So here is the from 1858 so 1858 Shulten with white pieces Morphy with black and here we have uh, e4 e5 f4 king's gambit uh, back in those times it was completely standard opening like nowadays Spanish or uh, Italian game and d5 Falkberg counter gambit that's why you have to love Morphy, or at least I have to. Um, immediately, you know, Morphy himself also played uh, King's Gambit a number of times, and he, he was a very dangerous attacking player, uh, especially with white pieces. He used to use King's Gambit, Evans Gambit, and, you know, he. Um, there were some people who claimed that Morphy was indeed the best in open uh, games, E45, the best attacking players, player in a in open games and uh, for that reason some people managed to pose him some problems in some more closed positions where he didn't feel so confident yes so d5 he just says okay who is going to attack whom uh, we know that after d5 white is basically obliged to take on d5 because of course, this is not going to end well for white, yeah. Yeah, so this is 
too easy. So e d5 is the move, and nowadays we know that e f4 move is also a very good and a solid alternative for black. So Falkberg counter gambit works well today, even today. And uh, if you ask me, I can um, I can tell you that uh, Falkberg counter gambit is good alternative against. Uh, King's Gambit, of course, against King's Gambit, you have at least uh, a few good options. So you can just take the pawn and play g5 and black is good. But you have to be prepared, yeah. So ed5 and e4. This is typical Morphe play. I mean, this is, uh, you have to uh, give him, um, um, you know, a lot of credit. Because he was always fighting for, uh, you know, initiative but as, as i said uh, i will omit his games because basically <laughs> his games were always ending in almost always ending in some mating attacks and uh, as i understand initiative it's much more than that so e4 now he just look this is just move three he is black he has black pieces and now immediately e4 he's showing to white now I really want to put you under pressure. Nowadays we know under pressure, yes. Nowadays we know that d3 move is white has to do this. Yeah, d3, knight f6, and now white should probably take on e4 and position is complex. I mean this pawn on f4 is not very uh uh you know white would prefer in this position to have this pawn on f2 now. But okay, white is still pawn up and position is complex. This is fully playable, probably, for both sides. Uh, e4 and now uh, white starts to a little bit, you know, he plays a logical, knight c3 is logical. You develop the piece, you attack on e4. But already here, this is slightly, uh, slight inaccuracy, not slight, uh, slight mistake, small mistake already. Yeah? Inaccuracy by white, okay, knight f6, logical move, develop the piece d3 and here this is the the thing why i'm showing this game now um you can learn a lot from from morphe and if you if you're um aspiring player who wants to learn how to attack how to play dynamic chess uh, you can watch the games of paul morphe so here immediately bishop before he's immediately saying okay no need for some ed3 or something no 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 no. immediately attacking with every move he is putting more and more pressure on white what to do i mean if he takes d4 94 already white feels uncomfortable something on c3 is the threat queen h4 is the threat this this looks too dangerous bishop d2 okay now white thinks probably okay i'm pawn up what's going on nothing is going on i'm just pawn up everything's fine well but you play against Morphe. E3. That's the move. Okay, white has to take. This is the best move. And I think even modern engine, you can imagine in year 2021, these modern beasts, silicon beasts, you know, they agree that this is the best move. And Morphe was genius. I mean, he played this back in 1858, just to remind you. Yeah? The Spitri Castle. Okay. Let's uh, pause for a moment. What black did here? He just didn't count uh, any pawns. He sacrificed two pawns. And now we have after just seven moves out of the opening, white is defending. White started the game with King's Gambit, fighting for initiative, for attack. And if black uh, you know, takes the pawn on f4, then we know that there are many lines where white will attack and he will have initiative, of course. But then black just refused that and with Falkberg counter gambit with d5 and then e4 and sequence of very strong um, energetic moves he overtakes the initiative and now who is attacking black? Who is defending white? It's amazing, right? You can learn a lot from, from Morphe. Yeah? The only thing is, okay, he's two pounds down. But uh, anyway, you know, in chess uh, it's proved over and over many times you know material is not god spirit tops material in chess you can see that 
very often. Okay, this would be true what to do. And now, well, when I look at this uh, again, I, I checked this game and I, sh I was showing this game many times. I would maybe play rook e8 or here, or maybe c6. But Morphe, you know, bishop c3, okay. Why bishop c3? Probably he was thinking that if white takes knight d5, and now he's ready to bring more pieces into play already. And now you can see that here, only white, black is only pound, one pound down. That's, uh, he's one pound down. And what white has? He has king in the center, he has only one developed piece, and black has castle, and several pieces will be in play in no time. Rook e8 check, knight is already on d5, queen is coming very quickly, and knight c6 is coming, let's say this guy is already. I mean, all black pieces are ready to jump into action in one move, except rook on a8, and probably black doesn't need that rook. Yeah? Okay, so bc3, careful move. Now, I mean, you can maybe expect some move like knight d5, something. No, no, rook a check. Bishop b2, bishop g4. Well, maybe nowadays, you know, you would like to play knight d5 and then some, you know, maybe queen e2, queen c5, something. But no, bishop g4, very direct play. I mean, this is, this is just uh, amazing. White can't play knight f3 because bishop f3 and this would be disastrous for white. I mean, nobody wants to see this on the board. This is just a, a disaster begging for, you know, a, let's imagine something like this and queen f6. Black is going to collect, sorry. Uh, black is going to collect one of the pawns here and he is going to end up better, of course just getting a pawn back and with totally crushed white's pawn structure not to mention this guy on e2 it looks silly so of course that white can't afford to play uh, knight f3 that would be a strategical disaster and uh, probably he should play now move like king f1 or king f2 and king f2 looks a little bit scary because then bishop e2 knight g4 you know especially you're playing against such attacking beast like Morphe was. You don't want to allow that, those things. And Shulten says, okay, c4. I mean, this is, uh, I mean, showing a lot of optimism. In a position where you should really defend, you should really, you know, defend with all your might against, uh, you know, coming storm. Because black is already in charge, I mean, obviously in charge here. And you play c4, I mean, this, is, this can't be good, c6. I can't say if c6 is the best move, but definitely it is a logical, consistent move. Now, white should probably, not probably, I mean, white has to think about defense, he has to move the king, and then, of course, allow cd5 and continue playing. But then he would be just one pawn up and one pawn up and defending. I mean, he didn't like that. He preferred to be two pawns up still. Well, okay, now let's see what's going on. After just 12 moves out of the opening, black has a very safe king. Black has four developed pieces. Queen is ready. So let's say four and a half. Yeah, well, black will be attacking with five pieces, yes? His king is super safe. What white has? White has two pawns up. Well, that's all very nice, but those pawns are not doing anything. I mean, is, are those pawns uh, defending the king? Not really. Pawn on f4 is really a liability now, and king is in big danger. I mean, white is already here, probably already lost. So d6 was, I mean, if c4 was optimistic, d6 was just terrible over you know terrible off the charts <laughs> okay so here knight c6 white is lost but look even when you have a winning position so all this energetic play paid off in this game morphe shows who is the boss who is in charge and who has initiative obviously but 
um how often have you you had for example in your own games if you're an amateur player or just like to play chess how many times you lost uh perspective or position or better position or, or, or even winning position look i'm a grandmaster and i can really write a few books about my lost games in winning positions so that's maybe a little bit uh, embarrassing but still i think that every uh grandmaster has uh, stories about this topic how he lost some winning games obviously some of us didn't lose too many but some of us yes so my point is that even when you have a position which is winning which is overwhelming you know even then you have to be precise you have to play uh, energetically until the end yeah so okay white tries to stay alive king of one because it's it was about time knight d4 was hanging in the air but now king f2 was probably uh, the move uh, but nevertheless white is already lost and now it's relatively easy uh, you know for you to find the next sequence uh, this is just a child's play for morphe but look it's not this game is not about this uh, rookie 294 simple uh, nowadays it is a simple operation uh, even for um, you know chess fans even for chess amateurs this is obvious rookie 294 uh back into uh, 19th century i imagine it was wow it was very nice uh tactics yes so black is winning after 14 moves he's comfortably winning how he managed to do this because from the very uh, start of the game as early as move three he played d5 then he played d4 then he played d3 i mean he showed such energy uh, such uh, will to fight for initiative from the very start of the of the game so i think this this game is very nice uh, very good uh, for introduction purposes of this whole course i'm not claiming that every game which is following will be similar to this one because this is maybe just too one-sided maybe just too uh, direct yes that's why we will have more modern uh, games i'll show you some classical games and some but not from 19th century yes because uh, yeah back then in the uh, yes before in 17th century romantic times and then 18th 19th century you know defense was not really uh the strong point of many players or maybe even nobody would like to defend nowadays you know the level of defense is amazing it's unbelievable because we all have engines we all look at those amazingly powerful engines and uh, they show you many things we managed to learn how to defend and uh, nowadays this is almost impossible to have a win like this and i remember when i was much younger i managed to score many quick wins under 20 moves nowadays when they managed to win uh, uh in around 20 moves against decent opponent that's uh, you know uh, um a reason for uh, some small celebration yes okay so knight d4 black is winning queen b1 white is suffering no chance and now let's see how black is you know he wins this very quickly check knight g4 where do you go uh just to show you if if here that would be nice check where to go here and mate yeah that would be very uh amusing king e1 i mean who would like to do that black can do whatever maybe even uh first queen h4 and then queen e7 and that's totally winning yes probably there is no defense yeah so king g1 check another easy tactics check 
what to do check what to do here queen f3 check here white resigned just uh, you know demolition job was done 20 moves 20 moves white resigned because mate is coming okay if you go king h4 then black has number of options probably <laughs> the easiest is knight f2 yeah. just threatening mate queen h3 and queen g4 and i mean so that's why you know white just resigned so unfortunately i'm not going to show more of the morphe games in this uh series uh, because you know all almost all the best morphe games he was just too strong and uh, <laughs> he was just destroying people it was demolition job after demolition job not in all of the games but in most of the games uh so that's why i will use uh games which show more realistically you know some struggle some fight for initiative where, where people try to uh, outplay you know overtake uh, you know uh, outplay their opponent overtake uh, you know to take the charge in the game yes okay so i hope you that you will like the whole course and that you will enjoy and of course learn something that's you know at least for me uh, when i uh, when i uh, have uh, when i'm watching something like this or reading some good book chess book it's not only uh, you know that i like to enjoy i i also prefer if i can also learn something from this